I grew up in uh, what used to be described as the space age uh, or the space race. It was that time in history where every time you turned your television on uh, there was somebody walking on the moon or, or Princess Anne getting married. And uh, I was kind of besotted with the idea of, of space travel. That was my thing uh, as, a, as a kid. And um, I've always been interested in things that other countries do very well, which we do very badly. And um, our space program was an example of that. You know, the British space program was always like a bottle of pop connected to a broomstick blowing up in a, in a back garden in, in Rotherham. The English astronaut. He splashed down in rough seas off Spurn Point. I watched through a coin-op telescope jammed with a lollipop stick as a trawler fished him out of the waves and ferried him back to mission control on a trading estate near the Humber Bridge. He spoke with a mild voice. Yes, it was good to be home. He'd missed his wife, the kids, couldn't wait for a shave and a hot bath. Are there any more questions? No, there were not. I followed him in his Honda Accord to a little chef on the A1, took the table opposite, watched him order the all-day breakfast and a pot of tea. You need to go outside to do that, said the waitress when he lit a cigarette. He read the paper, started the crossword, poked at the black pudding with his fork. Then he stared through the window for long, unbroken minutes at a time, but only at the busy road, never the sky. And his face was not the moon, and his hands were not the hands of a man who had held between finger and thumb the blue planet and lifted it up to his watchmaker's eye. <laughs>